All right, then welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question numbers box. Now this is an interesting question based on math. So let me read out the question for you. We are given a rectangular grid that is a matrix of n rows and n columns and then they have defined what AIJ means. So AIJ means a uh, cell in the ith row and the jth column. Okay. And then uh, we can perform this operation that they have defined any number of times or possibly zero. Okay. Possibly zero number of times we can apply this operation. What is the operation? Choose any two adjacent cells and multiply the values in them by minus one. And the definition of adjacency is defined uh, in a way that two cells are adjacent if they share a side. So if you see here, if this is the cell, all the cells adjacent to it are the ones which share a side. So this is adjacent cell to it, this is adjacent cell to it, this is adjacent cell to it, and this is adjacent cell to it. Okay. So they are, like adjacency is defined four way: the left, right, down, and up. Okay, fine. So that's what they have defined. The operation is uh, choose any two cells which are adjacent, that is which share a side, and multiply the values by minus one. What we are interested uh, is uh, this guy x. What is x? Uh, x is sum of all the numbers in the grid. And what they ask is, what is the maximum x you can achieve by this operation? So there is no limit on this operation. You can apply as many number of times. What, but what effectively in the end you want is the sum of all the numbers in the grid should be as big as possible. So turns out that in grid you have some negative elements as well. So your job is to eradicate this negative elements, right? So more concretely, uh, you are given a matrix. In the input, you are given a matrix here. And uh, for each test case, what you have to print is maximum possible sum of all the values in the grid after applying the operation as many number of times. Uh, in other words, uh, you try to destroy the negative elements as much as possible uh, because then only the sum will be as big as possible, right? So since you have negative elements, you try to destroy your negative elements as much as possible using the operation they have defined. That is multiplying uh, uh, two values of uh, two adjacent cells by minus one uh, and achieve the maximum possible sum. So yeah, uh, that's the question. How do you approach this question then? One thing is clear that if you don't have negative elements, that the matrix is only made up of positive or non-negative guys, uh, you can of course uh, sum of all the values uh, in the matrix and that will be your answer, right? Because negative elements will only bring down the sum. So if there are only non-negative elements present in a matrix, your answer is simply sum of all the guys in the matrix. But if negative elements are there, um, they create a problem. They try to reduce the sum x that we want to maximize. X is sum of all the guys in the matrix. So negative elements are a problem and you want to get rid of them using one operation that you have. What operation you have? Uh, pick any two adjacent guys and uh, multiply both of them by minus one. In other words, this operation, what it is effectively doing is it is inverting the signs of the elements. So if both of them are negative, they both will be turned into positive. If one is negative, another one is positive. Uh, this negative will be turned into positive. This positive will be turned into negative. In other words, pick any two adjacent guys and uh, invert their signs. Okay. So negative elements are a problem. One thing is very clear. If you have negative element like this side by side, so let us assume the rest of the guys are positive. And if you have two negative elements side by side, you can apply an operation and turn both of them to positive. Okay. Or if you have negative elements like this, or you have negative elements like this, you have negative elements like this, right? In other words, if you have negative elements present besides each other or just side by side, you can apply some number of operation, some number of operation and get rid of them. So that one observation is good, right? Negative elements, negative elements uh, beside each other, beside each other is good, right? So we're just making some initial observation. I'm not concretizing anything, but negative elements beside each other is beneficial, right? If they are beside each other, our job is very easy because we can apply uh, some operations and turn them to positive. Because in the end, that's our goal. We'll have as many positive or non-negative elements present in our matrix, right? Because we want the sum of uh, all the guys to be as big as possible. Okay. So if they are beside each other, it's very good. But what if they are not beside each other? Uh, let's take a simple case or the worst possible case. Let's just say uh, one guy is here. And what can be the worst possible place the another negative guy can be? It can be, let's say, somewhere here, very far, okay? Uh, let's say islands apart. And the rest of the guys are positive, okay? Uh, the main thing that I'm trying to do here is, uh, I'm trying to see, can I bring the negative elements beside each other? Because if they are beside each other, it's very beneficial for us. We can uh, destroy both of them and turn them to non-negative number or positive for simplicity, okay? So that's what we can do. If we have negative elements, uh, this far apart, can we bring them side by side? Because if we can bring them side by side, we can convert both of them to positive, right? So that in the end increases this sum. Okay, uh, let's try to do that. Uh, this negative is here, this negative is here. 
our job is uh, either this guy either this guy reaches to an if it side that is either here 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 or vice versa okay but we only have one operation um, when i say this guy reaches here in the sense uh, the sign reaches there okay there of course the element cannot go there but if somehow this negative sign can come to any of its adjacent sides then my job is done that's good so the operation that we have what it does is so right now i'm assuming that all of the rest of the guys are positive okay operation that i have what can it do it can only invert signs of two adjacent guys so if negative is here and this guy is positive what i can do is if i apply one operation here this negative will come here and there it will become positive down right so if i apply one operation in this guy in for these two cells this will become negative and this will become positive similarly if i apply an operation here this will become negative this will become positive right similarly if i apply operation here this will become negative this will become positive similarly if i apply an operation here this will become negative this will become positive so on uh, this can go on like this and eventually a negative sign will reach here right so reach here in the sense the guy which was here will be negative that's what i'm saying right and uh, again you can apply an operation for these two guys so this will turn negative this will turn positive you can apply an operation for these two guys this will turn negative this will turn positive similarly this negative sign can reach here right rest of them will be positive and uh, if you followed some other path you could have followed a different path as well you could have uh, followed a path like this so initially we started our journey from here right so you could have followed a path here propagate this negative here right first and then propagate the negative here right or any other path uh, which you can good uh, which you can see propagate it first here then here in other words you can make sure the negative sign which are very far apart as far apart into opposite corners or matrix can be brought side by side because the nature of operation right notice i am saying negative sign i am not actually moving the element i am just propagating the sign in other words the nature of our operation is such that you can make sure any two negative signs present anywhere inside the grid can meet each other right that is they can be brought side by side so it doesn't really matter what elements are in the middle you can always apply some number of operation and make sure these two negative signs meet i am just taking the worst possible case that is you have only positive guys here so if you have only positive guys here what will happen is uh, like this will become positive this will become negative so i am just following the path between two negative signs right and you can apply some number of operation in that path and you can make sure these two negative signs meet so this will become negative this will become positive this will become negative this will become positive this will become negative this will become positive similarly negative positive negative positive so you take any two negative signs they can meet by just applying some number of operations in their path okay in other words you can pair up negative signs and turn them positive right the important word here is pair you can have negative signs anywhere present in your matrix but you can pair them up and convert them to positive how using the approach that i sh just showed you just follow the path between them and apply some number of operation and you will be able to convert them to positive but the important word here is pair up that is that is if you want to pair up negative signs you need to have even number of negative elements right the number of negative elements elements have to be even in other words if you have 2p number of negative elements you can form p pairs you can form p pairs right that is you can form p pair of negative elements negative elements side by side and convert them to positive that is effectively converting every element in the matrix to be positive or non negative right so the observation that we made is we can pair up negative signs and turn them positive any two negative signs can be paired up and turn it to positive so if we have even number of negative elements that is 2p number of negative elements p pairs can be formed and they can be converted to positive in other words all the elements are negative all the elements in the matrix can be converted to non negative or positive guys so you can get the sum to be equal to sum of absolute value of all the elements in the matrix but what if you don't have even number of negative elements one negative sign will remain right you will be able to pair up so if you have uh, let's say 2p plus one number of negative elements you can form pairs like 2p pairs like p pairs and destroy them but one of the negative sign will remain right that one sign you won't be able to do anything so what are you going to do it uh, give this to the value give this the value with uh, smallest smallest possible 
smallest possible absolute value right see uh, it's very obvious um, if you have only one negative sign present here you are better off giving it to the guy which has the smallest possible absolute value because in the end we want the sum to be as high as possible so if that negative sign is present here uh, you give it to the guy with the smallest possible absolute value and how are you going to give it you have the operation right you can always propagate a negative sign right to whichever way you want so that's the operation you have in other words what i'm trying to say, say here is guys if you have all the elements to be positive here but only one of them is negative you can propagate this right at your will at your will you can make sure this uh, negative uh, sign reaches to any any element you want and that element i am saying should be the one with the smallest possible absolute value the question is done and dusted so what is the pseudo code here uh, if number of negatives if number of negatives that you have are even your answer is simply uh, sum of absolute values right sum of all the absolute values in the matrix summation of absolute values of aij right because if you have 2p number of negative elements you can form p pair of negative elements that is you can bring them side by side and turn them to positive so that you can do but if they are odd um, at least one of them will have a, like at least no exactly one of them will have a negative sign and this you will give to the guy with the smallest possible absolute value because you want the sum to be as big as possible in that case your answer will be summation of absolute values of aij but in this uh, you won't add the guy with the smallest possible absolute value so minus y and you are going to give that guy negative sign so minus y one more time so this minus y is because you are not supposed to add its absolute value and this minus y because that guy will have the negative sign okay so yeah that's the pseudo code and let's just quickly implement it then okay guys so let's just quickly implement the solution now i've already taken the input here nm number of rows number of columns and the matrix now what we want to do is we want to count the negative elements right so i can either run a loop uh, on this matrix again or by taking the input only i can count the negative element right so i'll create some variables here uh, first is i'll create a sum variable uh, this actually holds the sum of all the absolute values in the matrix and then i'll hold the negative count how many negative elements are present and i also might need uh, the guy with the smallest possible absolute value or in other words smallest magnitude this i'll need right because if negative elements are odd then i'll have to subtract it so i need three things uh, some of the sum will actually hold after this loop ends sum of all the absolute values right and this negative count will hold how many negative elements are there and this mini will hold the guy with the smallest possible magnitude or smallest possible absolute value okay so one thing here uh, what you have to do is just add the absolute value right add the absolute value whatever you took matrix of ij right so i've taken the input and i'm adding its absolute value now if this guy is negative the input that you just took was negative then you increment the negative count right and uh, we have to update this mini what is this mini uh, this is the mini is the guy with the smallest possible uh, absolute value or magnitude so min of uh, absolute of matrix of ij comma mini right of course i have to write a bracket here and like this okay so mini will be the smallest possible magnitude and uh, after this loop ends uh, what you have is you have sum of uh, magnitudes right sum of all the absolute values in the matrix you have negative count and you also have the guy with the smallest magnitude so all that remains to check is uh, if negatives are even negatives are even your answer is simply sum sum of all the magnitudes else uh, your answer is uh, sum minus two times mini right one time you'll have to remove because you have added it to the sum and next time you have to remove because it will have the negative sign and you can just print it right so that's that let me just quickly run it yeah, so there's a typo here. This should be mini, right? It seems to be working. I'll quickly submit it now. Yeah, it works. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one then.